right. Throw the pie. Huh? <laughs> oh, this is such a lovely dinner party, Marge. Huh? I'm so sorry Billy couldn't make it. He's just so busy with his ventriloquism. You must be so proud of him. I am. Mm. I know we're really proud of our Jimmy. Well, there's no business like show business. <laughs> Norm, what are you doing these days? Oh, I'm a doctor. <sighs> My son, the doctor. Her, don't. What the hell is wrong with you? I'm a surgeon, Dad. You've never been able to accept that. Now, where did I go wrong? I raised him to be a comedian, but no. For his fourth birthday, I gave him a rubber chicken. He tried to revive the goddamn thing. <laughs> I removed a man's spleen today. What kind of job is that for a grown man? When I was your age, I was on the Jack Parr show, remember? <laughs> I just want to help people, Dad, make them feel better. You must make them feel better, you make them laugh. Now, laughter's the best medicine, huh? That's true. No, Dad. Sometimes synthetic morphine through a slow drip is the best medicine. <laughs> That's all right, dear. It's, it's just a phase he's going through. No, no, I want to tell you. Honey. I was talking to Millie today down at the HBO, and she said they have an opening for a comedian tonight. You'd have your own half hour special and a comprehensive dental plan. It's such a good opportunity, dear. But Mom, I'm not a comic. I'm a healer. Just this once, dear. Do it for your father's sake. He'd be so proud. Hmm? Then Nipsey says to me, I got news for you. That is not a bratwurst. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll do the damn show. But I won't be happy. I'll be miserable. Fair enough. We better leave now. You're on stage in 15 minutes. Oh. From the Vic Theater in Chicago, HBO presents One Night Stand. Starring Norm McDonald. Ladies and gentlemen, Norm McDonald. Well, good to see you, a good crowd here. How are you doing tonight, you all right? Yeah. Good stuff there. Well, I'm doing all right, too. I, uh, not much of a day for me. I, uh, I bit my tongue today, that was about all. You ever do that? Man, that hurts, huh? Still hurts. And very embarrassing biting your tongue, you know? You just be walking down the street, mind your own business, you know? Doodly-doo, doodly-doo, doodly ho! <laughs> and then everybody's looking at you and everything there, you know? And you're ashamed, you know, you feel ashamed that you bit your tongue. People go, hey, what's the matter with you there? You go, oh, ah. <laughs> my uncle's sick. <laughs> yeah, I didn't bite my tongue, if that's what you think. <laughs> I'm surprised I don't bite my tongue all the time, actually, you know, because I got so many teeth, you know. I got 50, 100 teeth, something like that. And uh, they're all right around my tongue there, you know. They don't get out much. Ah, but I quit smoking. That's good for your teeth, man. You ever try that? Holy cow, is that tough, huh? I smoked ever since I was a kid. I always remember smoking, you know? One time I remember I was a little kid. I was like eight years old. And I was behind my garage. I was sneaking a cigarette back there. And my dad caught me. I'll never forget it. His big head came around the corner of the garage. There was my dad's big head. And then his body right after it. There was his body. Trailing his head as it often would. And... He grabbed me, and he hauled me in, and I thought I was in for the strapping of my life, you know? What he did is he pulled out his giant cigar. Must have been half the size of my arm, this big cigar. Stuck it in my mouth, lit it up, made me smoke it all the way through, right to the end. That's when I started smoking cigars real heavy. <laughs> that plan backfired on him. Then there was another time I remember, now that I'm thinking about it, I was behind the garage again as luck would have it. And uh, this time I was smoking a big fat joint back there. And uh, don't do drugs. <laughs> and uh, my dad's big head showed up again. And there's no body this time, just a big head. That was the funny part. 
You like to mix it up like that, you know? So anyways, he grabbed me there with his teeth and he hauled me in. And uh, I thought I was in for the strapping of my life, you know, but uh, injected me with heroin. So he was, he was a strict man, I'll tell you that. But you gotta quit smoking, that's all I know, man. You gotta quit smoking. It's not all I know, I know other things too, but uh, be a kind of a wasted life if that's all I combed out of it there. But, but uh, you gotta quit smoking, because otherwise you get old and then unhealthy, you know? You see a lot of that, you know? Although some guys don't. You ever see those old guys? Doesn't matter what the hell they do to themselves, they just grow old anyway, you know? Meet a guy, be the oldest bastard you ever met, you know? Just does everything wrong, you know? Every day, I smoke four packs of cigarettes. I drink a bottle of Jack Daniels and I hit myself in the head with a shovel every goddamn day. <laughs> I'd like to die. God, I'd love to die. I... One time I put a shotgun in my mouth and blew the whole goddamn back of my head out there. Just a slight ringing in the ears. I can't die. I think my girlfriend wants to get married or something, you know? She's dropping hints now all the time, you know? I think she wants to get... Last week, she got a one-year subscription to uh, Bride Magazine. Uh, and, uh, I renewed it for another five years. <laughs> Man, and them engagement rings, boy, they cost a lot, boy. I was looking at them. Cost like a thousand bucks, two thousand bucks, you know? Three thousand bucks, something like that. Four thousand bucks. <laughs> Big number divisible by a thousand, anyways. <laughs> And uh, you can get cheap ones, too. I saw one ring, 20 bucks there, engagement ring, you know? But uh, what the hell are you going to do with that, huh? You know? Go, here you go, honey. I, I love you a little bit. <laughs> I get down on my knees, but it seems kind of stupid for 20 bucks. <laughs> but I don't know. I don't mind spending a lot of money, but a ring, hey, that's a kind of a pointless thing there, you know? I don't know. I think I'm going to get my girlfriend a nice engagement stereo. You know, nice... <laughs> Say, right. so with this wall unit ID wet, here you go. There you hold on to that. So, who knows, though, huh? Everything's expensive. Everything costs money there, you know? I went to buy a dog. I couldn't believe how much these dogs cost. Salesman in a store trying to sell me the most expensive dog in the store, you know? Big $600 dog. It's big pit bull, 600 bucks, you know? And I was looking to pay, you know, maybe a, a buck, something like that, you know, man? <laughs> Two bucks, something like that, you know? But I was going, hey, don't you got a bargain dog around to join here? Any kind of a dog of the week going on this week? A big bin of dogs maybe that I could pull something out of there? But this guy goes, no, he says, why don't you buy this pit bull? He says, this kind of expensive dog, but he goes, this will protect your valuables, this dog, you know? And, uh, you know, I don't have any very valuable, you know, I don't own a lot of stuff there, you know? I, I buy the pit bull, that would be the most valuable thing I own, right? <laughs> I'd have to buy something to protect it then, you know? I'd be out shopping for wolverines the next day there. Show me something in a timber wolf, my good man. I'd be saying to some good man there. No, you don't want a dog like that, man. I, I want a dog to do things for me, you know? Fetch my slippers. That's the joy of having a dog, you know? Pitbull won't do that stuff. Go, hey, Pitbull, fetch my slippers. Pitbull go, hey, I could kill you, pal. <laughs> I'm a pit bull, don't you read the papers or anything? I, I kill, that's all I don't fetch. I fetch people, that's all I fetch. I can fetch you a guy, that's the best I could do there. And uh, maybe be wearing some slippers. How'd that be? When I was young, no such thing as a pit bull. When I was a kid, it was the, uh, the meanest dog around, the Doberman dog, you know? And uh, they'd kill you too. They'd rip your throat out just the same, you know? But not fast like a pit bull, eh? A Doberman always, Give you a little head start there, you know? <laughs> they were a sporting dog, them Doberman. <laughs> They'd see you in the street, they'd go, hey, that your house over there? Yeah, hey, go ahead. <laughs> then they soar through the air and rip your throat out. <laughs> and do a flip, you know, and uh, you'd be impressed, even though you're dead, you know? And, Man, look at that flip. Man. But I don't want it. You don't see dope mans around anymore. You ever notice that? 
pit bulls now. They got all the work and everything. All the domestic security jobs go to the pit bulls. And man, a Doberman's like the forgotten dog now, you know? Once in a while you see him on a park bench with a frisbee there, you know? <laughs> I used to be somebody. <laughs> I'm a Doberman. <laughs> got a buck? <laughs> buck for the Doberman? So I'm getting into those killer dogs, you know? I always buy a dog. When I'm buying a dog, I think to myself, I go, hey, if this dog goes berserk, could I take him? <laughs> I got a nice wiener dog. I got one of them wiener dogs. <laughs> wiener dog can't rip your throat out or anything like that, you know? <laughs> Unless you're lying down, you know? Be like, yeah. <laughs> you have to be lying down sleeping there, you know? And a wiener dog sneak up late at night, start nibbling at your throat there. And, Maybe by daybreak, he's got a hold of a vein there. He's pulling out a vein there. You know, you wake up, oh, get away from me, you wiener dog. The hell do you think you are, a pit bull or something there? Get my vein back there. Where does he get off a wiener dog? There's a hickey, a little hickey there. That's about all. And that's embarrassing too. Hey, you ever have a hickey, man? You be walking down the street, people see, hey, you got a wiener dog over there, huh? So I do, now that you mention it. <laughs> so you never know, don't I? But the hell with dogs. I'm gonna get to be a big guy, just defend myself. You know, I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna work out. That's what I'm gonna start doing. You know, I haven't worked out for a, forever. I never worked out. <laughs> Good God, has it been that long ever? <laughs> but I gotta start, you know, because uh, man, I think. I used to be in good shape. When I was younger, that's when I was in good shape, you know? Back when I was in my peak physical condition when I was about, like, uh, a one. <laughs> Man, you should have seen me back then. When I was one. Oh, God, I look good. Young and fresh. You wouldn't know me now if you see me when I was one, you know? I even look good for my age. People would come out to me and go, what are you, zero? <laughs> and I go, no, I'm one over here. They go, man, no, look at day past zero. I'm not bullshitting you there. <laughs> look good. And I go, oh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. But uh, I'm one. <laughs> so you got to stay in shape. And I watch the TV. Watch a lot of sports on the TV. Everything on a, any sport at all. You know, I don't care, you know. And some of those sports are not even sports, you know. You ever see those sports on the TV where they just try to take two different sports and combine them together and make up a new sport? You know, they don't even work together, you know, like, Guy will run a hundred yard dash and then fish. <laughs> but I don't know, so there's one cliff diving. There's a weird sport, eh? A guy diving off a cliff there and they're trying to pass it off as a sport. You know, it's like uh, attempted suicide pretty well, eh? <laughs> Next week I saw a TV guy that got uh, washing down quaaludes with wood alcohol. Can you believe that? <laughs> about that for a smart, eh? But uh, it's tough to know who's better in cliff diving either. Like you see a guy diving off a cliff, they go, oh man, a guy diving off a cliff. And then another guy dives, oh, there's another guy diving off a cliff there. But you can't tell who's better, you know? Like uh, if you survive at all, hey, you're a great, you're a, you're a great cliff diver there. There's only two classifications in cliff diving there. There's a grand champion and then uh, stuff on a rock. <laughs> Very hard to make a comeback in that sport, I'll tell you that. There's a lot of dedication there. Oh, man. But I don't know, though, you know? I love the TV, though. Anything on the TV at all. Watch game shows. You ever watch them? You ever see that game show, The Dating Game? That's the oddest game show I ever saw, that show, you know? They got no prize in the show. They just give you, like, uh, another contestant. That's your prize. <laughs> just parry off. No budget at all in the show, you know? And they always do the same thing on the show. They get a beautiful girl, match her up with three giant geeks there, you know? <laughs> Last week they had a guy on, it was like a crazy guy, loony bin, kind of a psycho wing nut, you know? You can tell by how to introduce her. Bachelor number two is a shadowy lurking character. <laughs> From no fixed address, please welcome. <laughs> He's just a guy. Menacing figure shambles into the studio there, you know? 
Then they make the girls, you know, ask those questions. Eh? They always be about sex, you know. Always thinly disguised sex, you know. Never direct, you know, insertion or anything, but it's always something about, you know. Like the girl go, bachelor number two, if I were a popsicle, what would you do to me? What would you do to me if I were a popsicle? That's what it says in the card here. So guys, well, if you're a popsicle, huh? Well, first of all, I guess I'd, uh, Take your wrapper off. <laughs> if you know what I mean. And then I'd uh, grab a hold of your sticks. <laughs> if you know what I mean. And then I'd press you against the counter to your broken too. <laughs> Put happy in the freezer till later. You know what I mean there, I... You understand what I'm getting at? That was nuts. Crazy as a hoot owl, this guy. Oh, well, it's good to be here, man. I came down here, I got a, dr got a lift down here. We drove down, me and my two buddies there, and uh, four hours it took us to drive down here. And uh, I was in the back seat all the way. You ever been in the back seat for a long trip? Oh, man, is that stink or what? Man. What a rough place that is. And when there's only three in the car, you know, and you're in the back seat, you know, you know you're not the most popular guy in the car. Do you? <laughs> Got no dignity back there at all, you know? Didn't even have a door for me. Just one of those two-door cars. Only had doors for the front seat, guys. I didn't even have a door at all. I had to bum a door off one of the guys to get out of the car. Man, lonely back there. You want to be in the front seat. That's where you want to be, huh? Right beside a driver, that's the place. Second in command there. You get to look at a map and everything and check out the tapes out of the box and all that stuff. And you go, hey man, the driver dies, I'll be the driver. <laughs> Got responsibility there, you know? Backseat, man, you're just cargo back there. You know, just... <laughs> Nothing back there. You can't talk to them, you know? You got that class barrier, front seat, back seat thing there. You can't. You can't smash through that, you know? You ever try, you just stick your head into the front seat? You go, hi! What are you guys talking about? It's me from the back seat. Okay, I'll go back then. But after a couple, three hours on the highway, you get so lonely in the back seat, you know? After a while, you start trying to make contact with other people in other back seats along the way to... You ever do that? Look out your little excuse for a window there. I'm backseat people too over here. I, we must band together. I, I have some literature for you to look at there if you want. Could be a cow in the back of a flatbed truck there. Hello there. It's livestock, but it noticed me there. You really tell how they care about you in the backseat by that fucking seatbelt they give you, huh? Just right here, no shoulder strap or nothing, just... Same seat belts they banned from the front seat back in the 50s. <laughs> said, man, we can't have these in the front seat. We throw them in the back seat. <laughs> we'll give you shoulder straps up here and airbags and on impact, a, a medic will jump out of your glove compartment there. <laughs> You're good up here. You even got a headrest for it, you know? So your head doesn't hurt or anything. You know? Man, you be in the back seat, eh? that headrest just be like a face smasher to you, you know? Just, just grimly mocking you for the whole trip there. Headed going to that like an overripe cantaloupe there, you know? Just splash. Uh, the only way you can escape it is to sleep, you know? That's the only thing you can do in the back seat. Sleep and for chance to dream. I love sleeping. I know you like to sleep. Oh, it's the best, man. You'll be having a really good dream, and then uh, right in the middle of the dream, you wake up, right in the best part of the dream, and there you are, back in your stinking life again. <laughs> man, that's rough, huh? So then you fall asleep, try to re-dream it. Man, that never works out there. Always end up with some weird mutation of your original dream there, you know? <laughs> Well, the other night I was dreaming, you know, I was in a pool with Christy Brinkley and we were approaching each other, me and Christy Brinkley in a pool, and we were just about to touch and I woke up. So then I fell asleep, tried to re-dream it there, ended up 
shooting pool with David Brinkley. <laughs> that wasn't very much fun there, I'll tell you that. <sighs> well, I'm looking for gifts. You ever get a, uh, you ever get a bad gift, you know? Last Christmas, man, I got the worst gift a guy ever gave me. He gave me a lottery ticket. You ever get that for a gift? Man, what a stinking gift that is. You know, what's a guy even thinking there? I go, here you go. Nothing. <laughs> Merry Christmas. It's nothing. From me to you, not anything. You know, unless it wins, then it's not, man. But let's face it, you give a guy a lottery ticket, you know, you don't want it to win. What kind of fucking nightmare would that be, you know? <laughs> Man. Imagine that, you get a call a week after Christmas there, go, hey, Fred, what's happening there? Yeah, I remember that ticket I gave you. 14 million bucks, huh? <laughs> ah. Ah. Good for you, Fred, yeah. No, I'm happy over here, no. Listen, what'd you get me again there, Fred? I I can't remember what you got me. I, I know I got you to 14 million, but I can't. I can't remember for the life. Oh yeah, the cup. Yeah, I remember now. Yes, thanks for asking. I'm enjoying the cup there. I uh, had some tea out of it the other day there, and uh, some cob. I'm hoping to have some soup there, and uh, guess no chance that cup skyrocketing in value at all, huh? Well, I guess that's a sensible view. Well, I gotta go now, Fred. I gotta go. Apply a shard of glass to my throat. <laughs> okay, goodbye. <laughs> oh, you never know. <laughs> but you always gotta buy. I gotta buy for my dog now. I gotta buy gifts for him, you know? And, uh, man, he has a birthday like seven times a fucking year or two, you know? So, <laughs> always out shopping for him there. And, man, you don't know what to get a dog. It's eh? very hard to buy for a dog. You know, what the hell are you gonna get him, you know? You wanna get him something he wouldn't ordinarily get for himself, you know? But that's... <laughs> Just strewn garbage, that's all he ever gets for himself. I got him a rubber bone, I thought he'd like that, you know? Doc gets it, goes, oh great, a bone! Oh yeah, it's not a bone, million laughs, pal. Uh... What's next, an electric fire hydrant over here? What the... the hell are you doing to me? I'm a dog over here. My grandmother, she got my dog a sweater, she knitted him a sweater. What a useless gift that is, huh? Big green sweater, you know? I don't want to make the dog wear it, you know? It just humiliates the dog there. You know? What happens if the dog gets lost, you know? He's wearing a sweater, right? How long is he gonna survive in the alleyways with that on his back, huh? Yeah, them's mean streets if you're a wiener dog in a cardigan, I'll tell you that. You don't last too long there. Lay off you like a... Whatever they off you like. Ah, so who knows though. I, my dog doesn't really talk, by the way. I know my dog talks in a lot of my little jokes there, but uh, I'm just lying there. He's a regular dog. You know? I lie like that sometimes. You ever lie? Who the hell doesn't lie? Hey, you gotta lie, but uh, you ever lie for no reason? That's the worst kind of lie, huh? You know, because usually there's a reason you lie. Like you want to protect somebody's feelings or, you know, fuck over your buddy or something like that. You know? <laughs> Would you ever just a big lie spills out of your evil head all of a sudden, you don't even know? You know, like a guy will come up to you and go, hey, you ever see that movie with Meryl Streep and the horse? And then you go, yes. <laughs> then in the back of your head, you go, what the fuck am I lying about over here? I, I stand to gain nothing by this lie. <laughs> the hell am I thinking back here in my head? Oh, I don't know. You try to be a good person, though, eh? That's the best thing. A lot of bad people, man. A lot of bad guys. I was reading this one guy in a paper, you know? Baddest guy I ever read about. This guy killed his family, if you can believe this, folks. Killed his family because the devil told him to. Can you believe that? Man, what a dork, huh? That was the headline, actually. What a dork! The guy kills his family because the devil told him to. But can you imagine that? And then afterwards, you go back to the devil, you know, you go, yes, devil, I did as you instructed. I, I slaughtered my family as they lay sleeping, and then I chopped them up and put them in a duffel bag. Here they are. I got them here in the duffel bag. I'll be burying them tonight at the shallow grave by the side of the railroad track. As you have commanded, O oh, Lord, host of the hoary netherworld. <laughs> and then the devil pulls off a mask. It's me, Bob! <laughs> 
Then you go, hi, Bob! Jeez, you got me there, Bob, you got me. Is my face red or what over here? I got my family in the duffel bag. That's one for you there, Bobby boy. Okay, listen, folks, you've been great. Thanks a lot, huh? Enjoy. Great kid, you killed him! You're a good boy! <laughs> you sure are, my God. I didn't know you could do it. I didn't know. Wait, wait, my husband is choking. I need a doctor. I'm a... I am a funny man. <laughs>